Thanks for joining me to have a closer look at the finer points of this 3M M64 half-track machine. Um, let's see here. These are the electronics modules. They're, this is rack width, so you can see that the console mount is wider than standard rack mount. Each uh, each electronics module has its own power supply, which is the transformer, regulator, and filtration, and all the power supply guts for the electronics module are on this little pull-out drawer. That's kind of cute. And and then we've got record and reproduce levels. They've got these neat little lock things on there. All that does is just put some friction on the knob so it's harder to turn, but that's a nice little feature. And we've got each module has two outputs. You can select between them, of course, a monitor, jack, and ready, and safe, and overdub modes, and source switching, calibration, which I'm hoping takes the level pots out of the loop altogether. That'd be nice. Um, and then the input, erase, and bias. And the cards are behind a flip, flip down door and I haven't figured out what all the cards are yet but they're all there for both of them and then the transport itself it's pretty complete although it's missing both the pinch rollers but all of the Linkage mechanisms are there. Well, that's a sticky wicket. There'll be some work to do there. I don't think the optical sensor is working. That's uh, this right here. And I don't know if there's supposed to be another one in there or not. Um, lifters are a little sticky. I covered the heads earlier in the thread. Uh, what else is missing? Various bits of hardware, funny business going on here with the reel tables. Of course, the meters are totally shot. And uh, but it's working intermittently. I'll go ahead and power it up here. So when you first turns on the. Uh, Real tables go into a tension hold, looks like. And it's got one lamp working on the electronics. What's happening is that sometimes it will just lock into stop mode with the supply reel spinning madly clockwise, and I can't get it out of that. Sometimes it comes out of that. And at first, I couldn't even get the capstan motor to spin up. So I think it's just um, tired relays. I have a feeling this has been sitting for a while. So let's I'll try play. So that's working. You can see the capstan spinning up. That's 15 inches per second. And then we switch to 30. Make some pretty neat noises. Um, now here we'll see what happens when I put it in stop. Yeah, I think it's... No. Nope. It doesn't always drop back into that initial state. And we'll see now there it's locked in. Rewind. Yeah, just the transport control is 
touchy. The only way I've been able to get it to drop out of this now when it's locked up like that is to cut the power. And then sometimes, um, sometimes after I have been pressing play, come on, there we go. I can put it back into stop and then it'll drop back to where these are just slowly spinning in a holding tension. But it's not gonna do that for us now. This is another cute little thing, this little um, solenoid operated dash pot damped gate. Let's see. And I know that the record circuitry is working, at least telling the electronics to work. Because we've got our nice red lights. Yeah, and we're not going to do it here. Yeah. So anyway. And then the transport itself which there's some adjustment and work to do here, but lifts up. There we go. There's a series of cables and pulleys down there and some kind of a friction device or spring-loaded device that helps to hold it up. So that's the underside of the transport. You can see the, the cast and machined aluminum deck plate, which is really thick. This is the transport power supply right here. That's the capstan flywheel up to the capstan shaft and then the capstan motor is back in there and one thing I can't figure out I can't figure out where the brakes are I just see real motors no brakes logic board in the back this is all um, discrete relay logic so there you go needs TLC.